Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. Today, I am finally getting to review my little navigator from Marathon. So the reference number is WW194013. Now, before I get into this video, let me just do a quick wristwatch check. I'm wearing, uh, if this thing will ever focus, there it is. Look at that gorgeous style. This is the Tissot Janeiro. Quite a rare piece now. Uh, limited edition. It's a reissue of classic classic 1930s um, Tissot chronographs that they did uh, in collaboration with Lemania. And uh, this is a stunning color red mustard yellow strap. I think it really complements the gold gilded dial, uh, in my opinion. Anyway, let's continue with the review. So, Marathon. Who are Marathon? Well, if you're not familiar with this brand, it's actually a Canadian brand. They've been going since the turn of the century. They were founded as the Weinstein Company back in 1904 and then became Marathon in 1939. They actually supplied timing instruments for the Allied forces in 1941. And ever since then, they've specialized in making high uh, precision quality Swiss made uh, wristwatches for various armies, armed forces, governments uh, all across the world. They've really become trusted and relied upon when it comes to quality, affordability and extremely durable uh, wristwatches. So let's get the basic specifications out of the way first. We'll start uh, with the dimensions. We have a diamond diameter of 42 millimeters including the crown and then the actual bezel is about 38 it wears a lot smaller mainly due to this asymmetrical design uh, this quite pronounced well not actually that pronounced but part of the case actually shields and acts as um, crown guards we have a thickness of only 11.5 millimeters. Lug to lug is 47.5, and then we have a lug width of 20 millimeters. So the dimensions are not massive, and I think they've got the size and scale of this piece absolutely spot on. It's definitely gonna suit a lot of wrists. Now, what is this watch actually made of? It's, it's quite interesting. This is entirely made out of fiber shell, except for the case back, which we'll uh, get onto in just a second. Actually, in, the spring bars are obviously stainless steel as well. It has drilled lug holes. The crystal itself is acrylic, but this is a very specific type of acrylic. And that's got to do with the mill spec or the military specifications this watch is made to. So the Marathon Navigator is a quartz, highly accurate uh, watch built to very strict and stringent military specifications. This is under the MILPRF46374 4G specifications and it's designed specifically for pilots, parachutists and law enforcement. The Navigator was first designed and released in 1986 and was developed as a request by the Kelly Air Force Base for a watch that could be used in high altitude to withstand extreme uh, changes in pressure while also being easy to read for a pilot. Marathon fulfilled this with the Navigator and constructing it out of a specialized fiber shell case, it made it water resistant up to six atmospheres or 60 meters, 200 feet. It's also sweat and shock resistant as well as being extremely lightweight. Now included with the Marathon Navigator, now you can get a variety of versions and different dial combinations. Uh, some sp specifically for various special forces or special units or militaries across the world. This is the US government version, as you can see on the dial. Now the strap is a special nylon, also made under stringent uh, military specifications, made under the MILS 46383B Type 3. It has a matching, now I'm pretty sure that's PVD buckle there. Uh, so it's a one piece with a nylon loop there and just matches it perfectly. Now the crystal, as you can see, it beautifully distorts as I angle it. It's resistant to rapid changes in pressure uh, that would be experienced by parachutists. And these dramatic changes usually cause a watch crystal to shatter or come loose. Uh, so this again was specifically designed 
for its uh, intended task. And what is really fantastic is that this is a multi-time zone watch. It's a, it's a true pilot's watch. And instead of having a GMT hand, we have a bezel with the 12 hour markings. Uh, this is bi-directional, it's 60 click. You wouldn't need 120 click because typically you're just gonna set it to an hour or so, uh, depending on uh, what time zone you're in. Now, one of my favorite features of this watch is undoubtedly that dial. You can see the clear, crisp white contrasted by a matte black dial, very clear, very legible. And of course, for illumination at night, we have tritium loom tubes, which are little gas tubes. And as you, as I move the watch around, you can see they're very, very kind of three-dimensional. Tritium tubes are self-illuminating gas tubes that contain an isotope of hydrogen, meaning they will not dull down in brightness like normal uh, photoluminescent, uh, you know, glow-in-the-dark paint, and does not require any external light source to glow. There's also a tritium gas tube at the 12 o'clock um, in the bezel. Now tritium is a, a really interesting choice of luminescence because it is constantly illuminated even in daylight. It's not like your standard luminova that after a while it will begin to lose its brightness. This is constantly glowing. In fact it's slightly radioactive and that's why you see the little radioactive logo uh, towards the three o'clock. Now don't worry, it's not harmful to you whatsoever, uh, but the benefit is that in low light it's constantly glowing and if you're like me, you wake up in the middle of the night, you check your watch, doesn't matter if it's 11 o'clock at night or you wake up at five in the morning, it's glowing all the same, which is really fantastic. Also, we have a slight color variation between the one at 12 o'clock to the other markers on the hours. Uh, or the other, sorry, the other uh, gas tubes. That way you can always figure out where 12 o'clock is and it's just easy to orientate the watch. So again, this has been chosen very deliberately for this watch. The loom actually lasts for uh, 25 years, which is very impressive. Now inside we have a three jewel ETA or ETA caliber F06111 quartz movement and this is made at Le Champ de Fonds in Switzerland to guarantee the highest level of quality and accuracy. Now what is great about this ETA or this uh, quartz movement it takes a standard 371 cell battery uh, which I think it lasts for about 68 to 94 months on a single battery. You can easily replace it yourself it has a snap back case back and you'll see all the military specifications actually written on the case back which I think is a really nice touch reminds me uh, a little bit like dog tags it has that no nonsense purely utilitarian aesthetic now the case back is the only stainless steel part well except for the parts of the movement of course now this movement is accurate to uh, minus 0.3 seconds to plus 0 0.5 seconds a day. It also includes end of life uh, indicator. So what will happen as it runs down in energy, it will start to advance the seconds hand every four seconds to inform you that you need to change the battery, which is really, really cool. I also love the font that they um, engraved into the bezel that they painted in with white. It's done extremely well. The hour and minute hand also have the gas tubes applied onto them. Then we have a very cool little dash of red on that arrow second hand. We also have the date complication tucked away at the 4.30 position. And then 24 hour markings on the inner part of the dial, just completing that military look. So we don't have a screw down crown. Uh, the crown just pulls out and you can change the quick set date and then obviously it is hackable and then you can set the time. I love the CTA, it's no nonsense, extremely reliable, extremely accurate um, and the fact that you can change the battery yourself is just, you know, you don't even have to think about it. I also love the texture of the fiber shell, it's got this kind of slight, um, I, I wouldn't know how to describe it, it's, it's kind of it's not exactly brushed. It's almost got a, 
actually it reminds me of chocolate but obviously not the color but just the texture of it we have a very slight curvature of the case it almost doesn't curve at all the main curves are actually in that slightly asymmetrical uh, part that that protects the crown the bezel slopes downwards to this coin edge that is very easy to grip the fiber shell does feel rather plasticky but you can still tell the quality is there obviously it's not as tough as stainless steel but it keeps the weight down which is something that they wanted specifically you know you, you got troops in the field carrying a ton of weight on them uh, every little gram counts so this thing is just so light in fact it's about 42 grams let's put it on a wrist and, and do a wrist shot while we're talking about uh, its weight and there we go now this is extremely comfortable i'm going to say you don't even notice you have it on uh, also it is quite large from lug to lug so it almost overhangs on my small wrist but for most wrists it would be absolutely fine despite the crystal protruding a little bit that beautiful domed acrylic it's actually not that tall um, and i think it's one of the most comfortable watches it feels like uh, you're wearing a g-shock really it has that kind of presence on the wrist also it's so legible um I love the way it looks. It has a hard as nails look to it. It's no nonsense. Also, I have gotta say, even though the strap is uh, quite rudimentary, it does the job perfectly. The loop it, it does a good job of tucking under any excess strap. I love the way the crystal distorts. It has almost a slightly kind of vintage feel with that domed acrylic, but uh, it's so contemporary at the same time and it's fun to to have as a second watch or a beta watch Anyway, let's summarize the watch. I gotta say I love its design I really do feel that this is a classic or a future classic it certainly has its own character That's that's without a doubt the fact that it's been going since the mid 80s and this is a, a, a fantastic modern incarnation of this piece it's also extremely comfortable it's reliable it's accurate it does exactly what it's supposed to do and what it was designed to and also the fact that it's from a brand that would with such a strong history and heritage in making military timepieces i'm proud to wear this um, and i love the fact that you can get different dials and, and actually you can get the dial that's completely plain without even marathon or u.s government you can go with the, the unmarked version which i think is also a cool thing in terms of value for money it's worth every penny uh, i paid just under i think actually i paid about uh, 100 and uh, 90 bucks or 189.99 i feel it's you know a really great way if you just want to add a beta to your collection or perhaps you need a quartz piece or actually as a gift for somebody this would just be i mean imagine giving this away to, to somebody or even a first watch this is a very dependable option and and quite macho quite bold but without being overbearing or oversized uh, it's stealth aesthetic uh, that little dash of red it's actually quite yeah it's quite stylish in its own way even though it's not supposed to be it's a pleasing thing to look at and the brilliant thing about the fiber shell case is that it's not gonna start peeling away like stainless steel that's been you know uh, dlc coated or cerakoted or any of that stuff which puts a lot of people off buying completely blacked out watches well with this you don't have to worry about that you can certainly see the quality everything lines up beautifully the seconds hit spot on when it ticks which is something you know a complaint usually uh, of quartz watches at an entry level but this is extremely precise <laughs> and for a quartz piece and i know you know the complaint about quartz is oh it's just cold technology it's, it hasn't got a you know a, a ticking heart like like well like the tissot genera there the complete polar opposite of this watch um but yet i still find it enjoyable and fun and uh, um yeah, I love it. Let's talk about the negatives. Well, I think the acrylic crystal, and you could probably see that it's already picked up some scratches. I have a feeling that it's a little bit softer than your typical acrylic. Um, 
just because it's scratched so quick compared to other acrylic crystals I've had. Also, your initial impressions when you pick this watch up, because it's so light, that fiber show, you're mistaking it for something, you know, because we usually attribute weight with quality. You kind of need to forget about that uh, when you handle this piece. Uh, not really negative. Um, something I will say is I would have loved it to have a higher water rating. I think 60 meters is a little bit weak. I understand they were meeting a requirement. They weren't going over um, because at the end of the day, Marathon make these in huge amounts, uh, you know, to equip entire divisions. So they've got to keep costs down. And I understand that. It, I'd really love to, to see this case utilized perhaps in a diver. But then again, you know, you got the Marathon GSRs and all the rest of them. My last negative perhaps and this is probably just the pet peeve but I wouldn't have mind the date to be a negative the actual date wheel um, but then again you know it might be too tricky to read because it is quite small I'd love to see a manual wind version something like the classic Hamilton Kharki field watch I, I feel this gorgeous case would be fantastically utilized with a mechanical timepiece Anyway guys, outstanding watch, quite possibly the best aviation piece under $200. It's uh, a really unique mix of, of uh, just form and function uh, with a pleasing aesthetic, reliability, but at the same time from a brand with true military heritage. I feel it's, uh, yeah, definitely a big, big seal of approval. Absolutely pure class in its, uh, <laughs> in its rugged, hard as nails own way. I love it. I, I really do. Um, I'm having so much fun and that's what it's all about. And uh, yeah, fantastic piece. Okay, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Don't forget to add your thoughts, queries, questions, opinions, all the rest of it in the comments below. Thank you very, very much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful, and I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.